panel with us today. So okay. moving on, uh, our uh, expert speaker for the day is Dr. Ajay Reddy. He is a certified NLP practitioner, certified corporate trainer, and business coach. He is also the MD of Vitality Hospitals. He is the CEO of Vitality Health Services, co-founder and CEO at Meduvis, a medical education and technology company. And allied, uh, it also it is helpful for the students from medicine and allied fields to gamify and internationalize their comp syllabus via AR, VR, and MR technologies. He is also the editor in chief at WealthWids, a quarterly magazine to help young professional entrepreneurs from health and allied fields to get inspired from the industry thought leaders. He is the COO at Vitality Health, seeing the company through the double the revenue and location space and playing a key role in expansion to newer geographies. Uh, welcome, Dr. Ajay. Uh, thank you, Chetana. First, Please let me share thank... your PPT directly because we have given you the sharing option. Yeah, I can share the screen. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, uh, thanks for uh, having uh, introduced me to the Kobe and uh, all the members uh, who have joined the you know, uh, the meeting today. So I really appreciate uh, uh, everyone, the uh, Neeraja Garu, the president of uh, Kobe, Telangana, and uh, government of India, which have, uh, you know, taken this initiative to uh, bring up uh, women entrepreneurs and, uh, you know, uh, to, get, to get them into the uh, business. So uh, let us forward to this... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, like a host have disabled the screen sharing. Naman, can you enable the screen sharing, please? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, can you try again, please? Uh, yeah, this is. Yes. I hope everyone can uh, see my screen now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, so as I've been uh, given the topic of uh, business models in healthcare services, so I shall be, uh, you know, first talking about uh, the types of businesses, you know, as a business model. And, uh, you know, uh, of course, uh, because I'm from healthcare, I've took this uh, painkillers and vitamins as a metaphor. And, uh, uh, later on, carrying with the products and services with the BMI, BMI as in a business model innovation and uh, uh, examples from the, or, you know, like a, a business model canvas from the healthcare services and uh, uh, examples for them. Okay. So uh, here you go for the business model, the types of businesses actually. And uh, most of, all, uh, I, I would say like almost all of the businesses would fall into either of these categories a candy, a vitamin, or a painkiller. So uh, what does uh, a candy really mean? So basically any startup idea that which uh, doesn't solve any real world problem uh, is like a candy. So, uh, you know, like uh, what, what are the businesses that uh, can be candies? So uh, these businesses can be the businesses in entertainment, maybe like uh, virtual games, so it's no wonder that a game called uh, Clash of Can. Dr. Ajay, we lost you. Dr. Ajay, are you there? Naman, can you check if Dr. Ajay is still there online? Ma'am, he is not in the meeting. Not in the meeting. Okay. Wait, wait. I think he he just got disconnected. I'll just call him. I'm calling. I'm calling. Yeah, okay. 
Hello. He's trying to log in again. There is some problem from his side only. Yeah, yeah. I think you know his net bandwidth must have dropped. Shanti, please mute. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry for. Uh, I suppose there was a technical uh, issue with. Uh, no, no the issue, with, uh, Dr. Raja. Please go ahead. Yes. So, as I was talking about this uh, uh, business model, that which actually really doesn't uh, address any kind of a, a real world problem. So businesses from uh, entertainment part, they actually uh, don't solve any problem. So like, uh, as I was saying, uh, a game called Clash of Clans, so which potentially is making $1.5 billion, sorry, million dollars uh, per day by selling their digital assets as, you know, like uh, in the game, uh, the lives, or maybe like uh, some upgrades. But any potential investor may not invest seeing its future because uh, the game could be addicting but uh, later on in the stages uh, that may go out of the business right so following to the second one we got uh, vitamins so vitamins are the uh, business ideas the set of business ideas that makes people's life better uh, said that uh, you know like a uh, uh, so all the businesses that that would really uh, solve, say like uh, we've got Uber or uh, taxi services that enhance the way we uh, mobilize, you know, like uh, commute to our works and other places, right? And uh, following to the other type of the businesses are the painkillers. So painkillers as in they actually solve a existing problem or a newer problem that would be arising later in the future. So I just want to have like, uh, to ask every one of you like uh, to answer in your chat boxes. So what do you really think Facebook as a business is like? Is it a candy, vitamin or a painkiller? I think it's a candy. Okay. But slowly we are making it as a vitamin and sometimes also as painkiller. <laughs> we are transforming that into that. Uh, well, definitely, yes. So <laughs> it all depends on the uh, people that uh, who you ask for. So if you ask a uh, engaged person, maybe like a, in early 20s, so he would say it is a candy because uh, he it is just for time pass and the other stuff. And uh, if you ask a middle-aged person or maybe like a woman entrepreneurs like you, uh, that could be a vitamin. So uh, maybe to uh, socialize with a fellow woman entrepreneurs and uh, and uh, you know to get to know the people around in a professional ways. 
And if you ask uh, a lonely mother at sitting part in a village, so it's actually uh, solving her problem to talk to her child who is sitting in US uh, having this uh, video call. So a, a set of business can be really like a candy, a vitamin and a painkiller. So thank you everyone like uh, for giving me that response. So uh, coming back backward to healthcare again. So an estimated of uh, 370 billion US dollars, uh, the, com the healthcare environment in India is set to grow by that uh, level. And uh, with an estimation of 35 to 40% of yields by almost all of the investors who have already invested into the healthcare startups, right? So coming to the BMI, so any business can actually be it a product or a service as a business can uh, really uh, launch into the marketplace, but uh, for its sustainability and its stability and to scale it up, uh, business model innovation is really necessary. So in our real world, we actually see and come across many businesses, uh, in, even in healthcare and even in other uh, sectors of uh, business. So I have given like uh, two examples, like, uh, you know, which I found as a innovation in the business model, right? So uh, please meet uh, Kushbu Jain. So how many of you have uh, came across Impact Guru, you know, their ads over the social media? I hope many of them did. So, you know, like uh, the count, as the company says, you know, like uh, to for any person to not get a uh, health because of the finances. So it's really bad, like uh, to lose a person or uh, to uh, you know, like uh, to better them because of uh, no cash or low cash. So Impact Guru actually addresses uh, this financial problem by the uh, to the patients or the patient attendants who find it difficult to arrange for the uh, financial services uh, to get the funds, right? So what is a business model innovation in this kind of a, a startup? So the revenue model of the Impact Guru uh, goes for as, you know, for the platform, the impact guru doesn't charge anything. So it's like 0% platform fee. But uh, for any company to sustain, it, they need they definitely need revenues, right? So impact guru actually uh, gets its revenue of five to 8% uh, from the content, from uh, you know digital marketing and uh, developing the content for the individual patients. So for any person, or any patient or a patient story that we actually see across the social media, they are charging up this uh, five to eight percent, and the and the straight five percent is their net revenue, right? And uh, the other uh, model I have found interesting is this uh, onco.com, uh, Rashi Jain and Dr. Amit Jokwani. Uh, Dr. Amit is uh, one of the chief oncologists uh, that we have in our country, and uh, you know, the onco.com actually connects the missed information that we actually have in this uh, net-driven world. Uh, so onco.com actually gives the resources and uh, uh, the information about the cancer, the patients who have been suffering with cancer. So on an estimated of uh, 2.25 million patients in uh, India and uh, out of that over like uh, 7 lakh people have uh, died because of uh, not getting uh, enough of uh, treatments. So Onco.com is actually uh, has found a business at the same time is addressing the patient's uh, pain points. Uh, well, going forward to our uh, another business model. So 
Uh, I want you all to meet uh, Mr. Rabinder. So uh, it's just for the representational purposes. He's not, he's uh, not an existent one. So Mr. Rabinder, he's basically from Kolkata and uh, uh, in his late thirties, sorry, in his early thirties and his wife in late twenties, uh, are working up in an MNCs at a mid level. And uh, recently for his bad times, uh, uh, his mother, Babita Ji has uh, uh, met with an accident and uh, to not live alone uh, in Kolkata, Rabinder has uh, decided to get her back home so that he and his wife can serve. But uh, having, being in a, you know, like an MNC, they couldn't give enough of time and there was a real challenge for him to balance his work life. So having this kind of a pain point, we actually find it in many people. And, uh, you know, like uh, one can address this by a business of uh, home and nursing care. So going forward with this kind of a business. Uh, so here I've shared the business model canvas of, uh, of course, this is the version one I've, I've uh, fixed. So who are our customers? So the customers in nursing and the home care services are like uh, in a B2B environment and the B2C environment. So in a B2B environment, the business model innovation could be one to have a zero or low cost to acquire a customer. So who do I call a customer now? I'm calling a customer who has a, uh, undergone a surgery or who has, uh, you know, who been a chronic uh, condition, like who's been suffering with a chronic condition. So as a hospital, like I'm, I'm not talking about a tertiary care hospital or a quaternary care hospitals. So here I'm addressing uh, uh, B2Bs as in a, uh, any hospitals that are above of 30 bedded and uh, below of 100 bedded. So an estimated of uh, 4,700 hospitals are present in, in and around Hyderabad uh, that uh, fall into this kind of uh, space. So, you know, like when we are addressing uh, uh, or, you know, when we are approaching the hospital management to provide us with the patient information, one might be really uh, hesitant to share this kind of an information so that uh, you can serve them, right? But uh, when the billing really happens with, uh, from the hospital side and uh, you serve their patients in their name because hospital as a business can't really afford or maintain uh, nursing and home, co home care services. So you as a business are uh, addressing their problem wherein which, uh, uh, you know, the loss of revenues actually happen and uh, they are not getting enough of uh, uh, saying no to a patient when they ask for the services like really bad. So uh, that's uh, being for the B2B and the B2C are your direct uh, customers where in which you find uh, uh, a patient calling to your call center or uh, approaching you over your uh, digital platforms. So what are the channels that you are expected to meet your uh, prospect customer? So in the, in the online, it's about the digital marketing platforms across the Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, every other uh, platform. And uh, for the professionals, professional as in I hear address and take as doctors who own their own setups, uh, setups, clinics, or, you know, hospitals. So you can meet them over LinkedIn, Quora, or in you know, a professional groups as in CME programs, uh, continuing medical education programs. So to run this business successfully, what are the key human resources? As, it, as everyone knows, the nursing and the home care services is a uh, human resource driven. So uh, for the four categories that we have got, say like a, a patient is only need an assistance. So uh, a attendant who is actually serving that kind of a patient doesn't need any kind of a special skill except for he being motorly active. Uh, any patient about that, say like a, uh, 
for administration of drugs or ICU patient uh, who needs an ICU care. For that, we need a specialty staff, maybe the nursing staff, the um, from ANMs, GNMs, and uh, BSA or MSC nurses, and a software team and a business development team. So basically, the business canvas actually gives a overall figure and a, a, a basic idea from where to start and how to start. And the key partners uh, for a successful running and setting up of this business uh, could be the payment uh, processing platforms, wherein which uh, uh, maybe a, a person sitting in uh, US or any country other than India can actually book this kind of a service uh, to their parents and uh, have them happy. And uh, key opinion leaders and influencers in the medical space and MSMEs. So why do you have MSMEs in the nursing and uh, home care services? So we have MSMEs uh, in the nursing and home care services because in the most cases, uh, especially the MSMEs that actually have uh, production. So in factories, uh, there is always a chance of a person getting injured. So we can actually make them our customers as well. And uh, all the hospitals and professional associations. So for the revenue streams, uh, one may actually uh, deploy. Uh, one may actually charge based upon based upon uh, the services one is actually having. So having said that, uh, uh, maybe for what what is the kind of an investment uh, that uh, the nursing and the home care services uh, have? So with over uh, more than uh, 180 players in the market and. Uh, the major ones are being Protea, Call Health, and uh, Nightingale's uh, services. So one may actually see their uh, financials and uh, uh, the level of connections that they have got to establish this kind of a business. So as it is a human re resource uh, driven business, I would say anything like uh, to start with 10 lakhs and that can go up based upon uh, the geographies that one is wishing to serve. So having said that, I'm moving to the second uh, business model of ours. So I want you all to meet Dr. Ravi. Uh, so Dr. Ravi is a surgical gastro uh, with over 20 years of experience and uh, alongside with his wife being a radiologist. Uh, being 20 years into the industry, he has now uh, fixed upon the point to set up his own hospital. So all of them being a professionals, like around the clock, they can't even enoughly give a time to their uh, family. So in, in this, for, for Dr. Ravi, the pain point is like uh, to have uh, the resources to set up a hospital wherein which he, he gets this kind of a service, uh, he, he might be like uh, ready to uh, spend enough of money to avail this kind of a service wherein which uh, he can buy the medical equipment, he can uh, avail uh, uh, the construction of the hospital and uh, any other reg regulatory requirements. So forwarding our, to the second uh, thing. So Dr. Ravi has discovered this uh, hospital and e-commerce e marketplace uh, from one of his senior consultant. So moving to the business model two, hospitals marketplace uh, or an e-commerce site or an asset management for the hospital. So the business that I'm talking about really has a uh, very less players as of in the current market. The main players could be Medsaman and uh, Prime Medic. These two are the major uh, players in this space. And uh, you can hardly find anyone uh, in this kind of a uh, healthcare only space. So having said that, uh, 
to set up this kind of a business uh, one might be uh, needing like uh, you know uh, the kind of as i said previously the kind of uh, geographies that uh, one is expected to um, serve and uh, the business that they are expecting to scale up to so most of the resources shall be going into the development of the software and uh, as it is an online marketplace and uh, the other one could be uh, the tie ups with the hospitals so why do we need to tie up with the hospitals because as i've said previously the asset management say a hospital is uh, expecting to uh, sell off their existing assets and uh, buy an advanced versions of it so they might not be getting uh, a proper marketplace where in which they can sell off their existing or uh, sparsely used uh, medical equipment because the uh, medical equipment actually comes with a huge cost and uh, having them not used for many days also would uh, uh, get their uh, uh, usability down so coming to the chetan i'm just like wondering if i if i'm audible or not you're audible dr rajay and your your ppt2 is visible i've been checking on that not not an issue okay okay i'm sorry i'm sorry yeah. uh, so in the b2b marketplace uh, we as i've said before uh, so we are actually serving to the hospitals clinics and nursing homes where in which we help them to buy sell lease or rent the medical equipment the medical furniture and uh, any other services say like uh, the regulatory services and the consultancy services so in the b2c platform we are actually addressing to the patients uh, post their uh, treatment say like a uh a patient uh, who has less mobility or no mobility so he or she might be needing uh beds so like we will be serve, we will be serving this kind of a market as well and uh, coming back to b2c h uh we shall be displaying the products from different medical distributors and equipment manufacturers uh they by earning the affiliate or either we can even take the distribution ship uh and sell through our channels so having said that what are the channels that we might be finding this kind of uh, uh b2b or b2c or b2ch uh, customers so it's similar to that of uh, the digital marketing uh in terms of online where in which uh, we go on over the facebook ads youtube ads to uh, you know like when people are finding us over this kind of a platforms we can place our ads over there and uh, they might be uh, coming to our site and in the offline we can uh, go with the medical colleges because uh, who is expected to launch their hospital maybe like a, a professional who is uh, uh, in mid level maybe like uh, 15 to 20 years of experience in uh, into into the practicing of medicine or maybe somebody who is uh, graduating from the medical school who is uh, literally don't want to like uh, study anymore and uh, uh looking forward to set up a business so in terms of revenue streams so i have categorized them as uh, into into the three parts so first being the high ticket size customer so a high ticket size customer is a one who actually gives us a turnkey project to establish from a to z like uh, establishing a complete hospital and uh, giving them that so in that kind of a project the ticket size can be going from lakhs to crores uh, and uh, coming to our breadwinning customer so like uh, one must be uh, having their uh, customers to to say like a, a high ticket size customers may be coming uh, 
in every six months we've got like three or four a breadwinning customer actually uh, helps in sustaining the business so a breadwinning customer is the one who actually either leases or rents out or buys a single to multiple medical equipment uh, in in this space from from us uh, from our platform so that you know they they actually help us with a positive cash flow right and uh, going to the third type of a customer we've got this uh, convenient customer so who are the convenient customers so convenient customers are the one who we actually uh, don't really spend any marketing expenses or uh, uh, customer acquisition uh, expenses so these are the ones who actually come down into our platform by word of mouth or uh, just by chance just by luck so even we do uh, serve this kind of a customer because they shall be adding to the the total value of value and the financial uh, cash flow right i'm i'm really sorry everyone like uh, if i'm uh, uh, you know sounding uh, uh, tense because it's a it's a very first time for me to talk to a screen so i don't know if somebody is hearing or not so i'm sorry for that no we can we can all hear you and you're doing a great job thank you so much thank you kalpana thank you for that caution uh, no dr ajay i think we are uh, close to reaching our time so if you yes. can wrap up in the next 2 uh, to 3 minutes we can have the next speaker yes so uh, i'm almost done like uh, so this is the uh, uh, second one so the third one uh, i hope so this is the third, the third business model so this business model goes as in uh, to provide the healthcare services to uh, the rural india actually so in most of the estimated like uh, in a, on an average uh, for any rural or a primary healthcare centers as we don't find primary healthcare centers operational or uh, or maybe like uh, due to of scarcity especially in this covid times so uh, you know like uh, with an estimation of uh, 1 is to 1000 doctors as per the who uh, we've lost 700 and uh, maybe like 700 plus of doctors in this uh, covid times so dropping that uh, number to 1 uh, is to every 1500 uh, patients so you know like uh, but the rural india is a one such suffering and one potential market for the healthcare setups so one may wish to actually uh, establish a primary healthcare center kind of a thing or maybe like a, a first contact clinics where we actually uh, have uh, doctors sit in that maybe on timely basis so one may wish to do that so uh, chetna I, i think i'm done and okay. uh, Uh, thank you so much dr ajay that was uh, a really wonderful uh, presentation from you are and we could see three different business models and uh, probably our uh, women also will be inspired to take up one of them which suits their convenience and uh, thank you so much uh, we keep this open for uh, quick questions